Yes, hi everyone, this is Dimitri Skulafetis, and uh, during this session we're going to talk about Tomlin orders. What is a Tomlin order? Well, basically a Tomlin order is um, a consent order, is um, uh, one of uh, various orders that a, a court can make. It's a type of, of a consent order. Uh, it is a type, what I'm saying is a type of a consent order uh, and not a consent order is because uh, with a consent order the um, the the terms of the consent order may be um, when, when they are not when they're not complied by the uh, by the parties they may be enforced um, by execution uh, that means uh, executing the judgment because the consent order is basically a judgment uh, however with um, a Tomlin order uh, usually uh, usually the um, the action does not the action does not uh, come to an end uh, it basically the consent order basically stays the action and allows for um, allows for the uh, the terms of the agreement to uh, be enforced by another action that means that uh, if that means that if either if either party does not comply with the terms, and they do remain unsatisfied for uh, a certain um, certain time certain time interval, uh, either party may basically uh, institute uh, commence legal proceedings, and um, uh, uh, and enforce the uh, the terms of the agreement. When we say enforce them. He can only enforce enforce them uh, through another through the uh, through obtaining another court order, basically by another judgment. Another so what he what what the party what the parties to a Tomlin order are doing different from the consent order. Uh, the uh, the um, the the mutual the judgment judgment by mutual consent. Well, basically, in in the uh, the Tomlin order, the there is no acceptance of um, liability with regards to the terms the parties the parties do not agree the parties do not agree in front of the charge that they're going to be liable with regards to, to certain terms what the parties do is that they only agree that they are going to carry potentially those terms uh, and this is this is the difference this is the distinction with the uh, uh, with uh, another consent order, not a Tomlin consent order, uh, where uh, the parties just um, uh, give a promise to to the judge, which uh, basically says that they are going to be liable uh, to uh, be liable to be held accountable for the for the breach of those terms, uh, and uh, they are going to. And they're going to um, be liable for execution of those terms in the various forms uh, that are provided for execution when the civil pr procedure rules. Um, the issue for a writ, for example, a writ of movables. Um, now, with the Tomlin order, the order itself, the order itself, says that the um, the the proceedings are going to be stayed. That means the proceedings do not come to an end, but they're basically stopped. They cease for some time, and that they're going to be stayed, and only be able to revive, revived, to the extent of uh, the enforcement of the new terms. When I'm saying enforcement, through the um, institution of a cause of action, which is going to um, which is going to uh, claim for the uh, new terms to be enforced, which have not been complied with. In the Tomlin order, what needs to be um, clarified is that whatever seems to be, whatever is, I'm sorry, within the body of the order uh, may be executed, for example, if the costs are included in the body of the order, within the order itself, they may be executed, they may be enforced by execution. 
if, for example, a payment out of court is included within the um, body of the order, it may be enforced through execution. And, however, if if the order itself, if the order itself uh, uh, refers to uh, to terms in the schedule, then those terms need to be enforced through another court order, and then accordingly the court order um, may be uh, executed, may be enforced through execution basically, but it does not provide a party um, if if something is not in the body of the order it cannot provide it with uh, direct execution, direct um, uh, enforcement in the way of executing the judgment. Now why do parties go for um, a Tomlin order? Why wouldn't they want to go for a typical consent order? And um, that's not, you know, that's not create uh, further trouble and further hassle and further delays with regards to uh, the execution of um, uh, a debt or the execution of uh, certain terms that are agreed between the parties. Well, um, with a with a Tomlin order, basically, um, when uh, parties um, want the terms to remain confidential and um, uh, want to uh, keep them away from the um, from the public eye. Uh, because of uh, business considerations mostly um, they will go for a Tomlin order so the order itself will state that the normally the proceedings are state and it might uh, in its body itself um, contain that you know, basically um, provide that the um, legal costs are going to be paid and enforcement execution for those costs um, may be um, may be carried in 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 case the uh, costs the legal costs are not paid. Um, but uh, the the terms are going to uh, be uh, provided in another schedule. If if they want certain terms to be uh, enforced for execution, of course they can add them in the body of the order. Uh, and since the terms are going to be referred to, I mean the order is going to be referred to a schedule where the terms are, which contains the terms. The terms uh, are the terms are not going to appear in the order itself. Uh, uh, there are there, there are other, there are other times when the uh, uh, the terms the terms between two parties who want to settle the case. Um, by uh, right of a uh, consent, uh, a judgment by mutual consent, and consent order other than Tomlin order. Uh, there is a case when the court does not have jurisdiction to entertain that, and because it does not have jurisdiction to entertain that, it cannot uh, agree to uh, to uh, certain terms. Therefore. They can uh, they can simply go for a, or a Tomlin order. In they can include those terms in uh, in the schedule simply because of this technicality, simply because of this practical difficulty. Because the court does not have the power to um, to agree to those terms, it does not have jurisdiction. So therefore, when there is no when when there is when they're not when the Tomlin order has been entered, and in the body of the order, the the um, the action has been stayed, save alone, save alone to the uh, extent of the terms that have been agreed. Uh, the party may uh, commence uh, different proceedings uh, in a different court, which uh, potentially has a jurisdiction to enforce those terms but nothing more. There will need to be a separate uh, court order uh, in order to um, execute the, uh, the judgment. There, I mean, the consent order is no judgment debt itself. 
It's not just a judgment that itself. There will need to be a separate judgment on those terms um, in order to in order to um, to execute them. And uh, finally, finally, there is. Uh, um, finally, sometimes, uh, sometimes someone might ask why the parties will just when there's no confidentiality and when there's no um, when there's no confidentiality and where, where uh, the parties. Uh, there's no issue of jurisdiction involved. Why the parties would just go for a tolling order? Why they just don't go for simple uh, judgment by mutual consent? This other, the, the typical, uh, the most widely used um, and more simple in nature uh, consent order, which provides for direct enforcement through execution of a judgment. Well, it is because. Uh, the uh, it provides for more flexibility, and um, the party sometimes, um, the party sometimes uh, might feel that they do not have as strong uh, a case as they have, as they think they do, um, and um, they. You know, it might be the only way that a settlement may be reached. Um, do not forget that since the uh, there's an order, as a consent, the tolling order is a consent order. Um, even though there's a stay of the action and there's a settlement, there's a stay of the action, and uh, there's a settlement. This settlement has been agreed before the court, and therefore, if there's a uh, uh, another action impliedly follows that by implication I'm sorry it follows that um, issues preliminary issues of whether there has been a contract or there has not been a contract or uh, there were certain terms that need to be that were you know I mean uh, there was like more more of a um, more of a um, uh, a deviating factor in the minds of the uh, of the parties. This will um, this will hardly apply uh, with regards to the tolling order. Uh, the party will just have to show that the terms were broken or they were not complied with. They were not adhered to, because uh, simply because it has consented uh, to the uh, it has consented to the terms. And an order, an order was made um, with regards uh, to basically an order was made referring to those terms. So this issue has been resolved already. What the party which wants to enforce the um, the terms that were agreed uh, uh, by the uh, Tomlin order is just the uh, the fact that they were broken now I understand that a Tomlin order uh, the difference between a Tomlin order and a consent order are a bit um, complex but uh, if you watch this video uh, with uh, carefully basically you will uh, get an understanding of um, of the differences between a uh, consent order uh, judgment by mutual consent and a Tomlin order uh, thanks very much for watching this is Dimitris Kulafetis and um, I hope that you enjoyed the video